Uh, and, I, and I will blame this on two particular individuals. One of them is Steph, the other one is Eric Wallin. Every single thing that I planted in my garden for the last two years has been a pollinator. I'm now raising bees, which I thought would be the coolest thing in the world, but it's more work than you ever, ever thought. But it's still, it's still cool. Monarch butterflies are winged magicians. They are like the, the court jesters of a backyard. And when you watch them fly, there's a sense of peace that comes over you. I was not aware until I was schooled by Stephanie that there is only one plant on the planet that monarch butterflies will lay their eggs in. And that means that it's the only plant that the caterpillar will eat. If they cannot find milkweed, they die. Right now, I live out here in the Philadelphia area. If you live in, in San Diego, you've got monarch butterflies now because they don't have to fly as far. But the monarch butterflies that would join me in my backyard in May are right now 4,000 miles away in middle Mexico. And they will start making that trip. I have an app on my computer that tracks it by the day. And I check it like I do the weather. And I feel like they're my babies. And I want to make sure that they're doing well. Well, here's the cool thing. Milkweed grows uh, wild by the highways of Indiana where I grew up. It, I, I hate to paint it. It was just a butt ugly plant. It, that's, that's, a, that's a gardening term. Yeah, okay. Uh, it, it wasn't all that attractive. And then they were hybridized by people like the Roberta's brand name, and they became these gorgeous multicolored plants. So what they did is they put together this very special package. I had a chance to launch it last week, and we had several thousand people who picked it up. You're going to get one of them that's orange. You're going to get another one that's white. Another, and by the way, the white is really rare. I it had is. never seen white milkweed before. Uh, there's a yellow, and there's also a pink. So pardon me for getting on my soapbox, uh, but Steph, I love it. This, this plant, when you place it in your yard, if you never thought... I don't, I don't have monarch butterflies. They're not around here. Plant mm -hmm. these and you, they will show up. Absolutely, Dan. You know, you said it really well. I'll take over the soapbox just for a minute now. Um, but you know, over the last couple of decades, we have seen a ma massive decline of the monarch butterfly population for various reasons. Um, but you know, within the last few years, we have been bringing milkweed or Asclepius here to QVC and QVC2. And all of you at home who have already picked up previous collections, I just want to, you know, Give you a little round of applause and thank you because at the beginning of 2022 scientists did count you know a little bit more monarchs than the previous year yeah. so yeah. we are starting to see you know incrementally an increase of the the monarch butterfly population but they are still in dire need and as dan was saying this is truly the home and host of the monarch butterfly and what i mean by that is once the monarch butterflies are flying around, they will seek out this particular plant to lay their eggs on. And once those eggs hatch into the caterpillars, Dan, these are the only leaves that those caterpillars will eat, as you see here. I Look, love that's this the It stripes yes. are hot right now. Yeah, they really are. They do, and yeah. they wear those because it makes them look thinner. That's, is that why? I didn't look, know that much, but thanks so much. I, I just made um, that and up. Then I just made it that up. It transforms. It goes into the chrysalis, transforms into the monarch butterfly. This was a video from our dear friend Sandra Bennett. Sandra Bennett, yeah. And by planting the Asclepius, any of us across the country, whether you have a small patio or a massive estate with acres of land, by planting this Asclepius, you are truly doing your part in saving the beautiful monarch butterfly population. And as you see there, Dan, that is not a monarch, that is a swallowtail. Yep. So it's not exclusive to the monarchs. All your pollinators will come and feast and enjoy on these, these flowers, but the leaves and the, and the, um, the plant itself is the home to the monarch. Uh, on my property, and I don't, I don't have a big property by any stretch of the imagination. It's a farm, but it's considered a very small farm. Uh, everything <laughs> I planted that was not you know, crop-wise were pollinators yeah. for the last two years. And Fantastic. this is the most bizarre thing. I had a ton of butterflies last summer, but we also have deer. And I would be out in the front yard mm -hmm. in the evening hours and deer come up to my side yard, which is where I put all these, these pollination plants. And the deers would walk up to it, kind of sniff it and shake their heads and walk away. They don't, wow. they don't tend to eat these. These seem to be wonderfully deer resistant. 
Well, which that's is good to know. fantastic because I don't want to compete with the deer for the butterflies and the hummingbirds. <laughs> that's right. And as you see here, Dan, is that caterpillar with all there of these gorgeous stripes. Yep. So, you know, when we see a bug crawling around on our plants, often we get a little bit nervous, but these are the bugs that you want. So leave them on the plant. That was actually um, a picture that I took from my, my home out in California. And I have to tell you, I did not plant enough Asclepias or milkweed last year. I had about four plants and I kid you not, at one point I had upwards of 200 caterpillars munching around. Yep. And then like from one day to the next, I saw that they were all gone and it's because I didn't give them enough food. So truly, I'm not joking when I say the monarch butterflies will seek this plant out. They're like flying around with their radar glasses and they will look for this and they will come to your home. So it's a really special plant for you and also for the monarch. Yeah, it used to be in my gardening. If I had caterpillars eating my plants, it, it made me upset. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It, this completely changed my entire totally. thought process. And I've got to tell you something. It's, it really is this magical, wonderful circle. Uh, I think most of us with this pandemic have been spending the last two years of our lives trying to figure out what, what the heck our place is. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, I, I've got a few people here in the studio. Joe, good to see you. you know, uh, but my building is pretty empty. There's tumbleweeds going by in the hallways when there used to be 1,500 people here. So our gardens, our gardens bring a lot of sense of peace. Yes. And, and I can plant pretty flowers. I love the roses that you showed us earlier. Mm -hmm. But when you plant milkweed, you're continuing the life cycle of a different creature, a monarch butterfly. Absolutely. It's the only plant that monarch butterflies lay their eggs in. Mm -hmm. And it's the only plant, again, the caterpillar would, I wish I had more last year because I had dozens of caterpillars and it's the only time I'd ever seen caterpillars on a plant where I'm going, you go, go yeah. for it, eat as much Absolutely. as you can. I'm, see, I'm greedy. I'm gonna put up a little worm caterpillar drive-through window. I'm charging them, okay? <laughs> That's the problem with caterpillars. Oh. No pockets, no as, cash. Oh. As long as you plant the, the milkweed, Dan, that's all good. But they'll, this is, find it. you know, bred to be beautiful in our gardens. You're going to have these gorgeous colors, and then you're going to be able to help literally save the monarch butterfly. Uh, it's, I'll tell you what, uh, this is giving back. And I can't wait till my grandbaby's up, uh, Maya and, and Evie. Uh, for them to see these caterpillars and to see the process of them changing from a caterpillar to a butterfly, it, as a bald man, it, still, it gives me hope.